If you're interested in chronophotography and you want to produce an image in the style of Etienne Jules Murray, like this kind of thing, then here's a workflow that you can use to blast out a quick one. First, you'll need a way to take pictures of yourself performing a task. You could do this by using a camera with an intervalometer, or having a friend take pictures of you, or you can just set your iPhone to burst mode, which is what I did. Then you'll need to take a bunch of pictures in rapid succession. Here's one, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. These are a little bit too close, but this is just what the burst mode settings on my iPhone were. So that's what we have. Next, for this technique, you'll need a white background. For the purposes of this demonstration, this is just me drawing with a Sharpie on a white piece of paper. So although the photos stink, we have the ingredients that we need to make our fake moray. The next thing I'm gonna do is open Photoshop. I'm gonna to go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack, and I'm, and I'm gonna go grab my big pile of source images, which I know are somewhere over here. This is them. <laughs> Grab these guys, open them up. I'm gonna sort them by name so that they're all in order. And Photoshop is gonna make a new layer for each of those images. Then what I can do is select all of them and I'm going to change my blend mode from normal to darken. Now you can see all of my images at once. I'm gonna adjust the opacity so that I get something that looks a little bit, I don't know, less muddy. And then I can stop there or to take it to the next level. And maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Make that pop a little bit. And then on top of that, I'm going to add a gradient map. I'll click on this bar and then maybe I'll change this to black. Maybe if I want to go full moray, I'll crank that contrast a bunch and invert the image. And then if I want to, to further differentiate between objects in the image, so my hand is one color, the Sharpie is one color, the paper is another color, I could even add another stop on here and add additional colors. And I can adjust this placement as necessary until I get whatever I want. Now, the reason that we had to do this in front of a white background is because in order to use that darken blend mode to create this image, we need a way to pile all those images on top of each other without the background getting in the way. So what that'll do is it'll mostly ignore the light pixels in the background and the darker pixels will show up. And that's why we can see all the darker parts of the image, like the hand and the Sharpie and the scribble, on top of each other. So there you go, it's an almost instant moray.